how to replace a possessable actor that is in the level sequence with C++ in Unreal, because sometimes you have actors that are fully animated and you simply want to reassign the keyframes to another actor. So let's get to it. But before we start, today's video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the video 37 of the series, so I recommend to go see that one, but if you don't want to, here is the code. And as usual, a new header file with this new little function right here that we're going to do today, the replace possessable actor in level sequence function. To replace an actor in the level sequence, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need first the current UID of the actor currently in the level sequence at the moment. That is going to tell the function which track in the level sequence you want to replace. And then the new actor you want to use to replace the actor currently used by that track. And that's going to be this parameter right here, the desired actor. So the current UID is the current track in the level sequence. The desired actor is the new actor we're going to use to replace the actor used by that track. And then to do that, we're also going to need to know in which level sequence we want to do those actions. And that's why right here, I'm providing the path of the level sequence so we'll be able to load that level sequence, modify it a little bit, save it, or do anything else we want to do with this level sequence. Perfect. So that's it for the header file. Now we're going to jump in the CPP and as usual, we're going to start with the includes and today we have just two includes and we already used those includes a bunch of times before. We have the level sequence and the movie scene. So here they are, level sequence and movie scene. They are in two different modules, level sequence and movie scene also. And we have to make sure that those two modules are also inside the build.cs file. So let's jump in there, I'm gonna check, okay, I have my level sequence and I have my movie scene modules right here. The build.cs file is set up properly, now we can jump back in the CPP and the includes are done. Now let's take a look at the function that we're gonna do. So to replace a possessable actor in the level sequence, what's the first step? Well, in my case, I'm just going to make sure that the desired actor we're going to use to replace the current actor is valid, because if it's not valid, it's just going to break the level sequence and I don't really want to do that in my case. So what I'm gonna do here is just making sure that it's not equal to null pointer. If it is, I'm just going to return right away because I don't want to set an invalid actor to one of my track in the level sequence. That's not something I want to do, but I guess if you want to, well, have fun. I'm not going to stop you. So here I'm checking if my desired actor is valid. If it is, good, I can proceed with the next steps. And the next step is to load the level sequence because we want to modify it, so we need to load it first. So I'm just going to do a static load object as usual. So static load object, the class of the object we want to load, so a U level sequence. And then we also provide the path of the level sequence we want to load. That's that's going to give you an object, assuming that the path is valid, obviously, that's going to give you an object that you can then cast to a level sequence, and here we go, you have your level sequence. Here I'm just going to make sure that my level sequence is valid, in case that the load didn't work, or maybe the path here was not valid, here I'm just going to make sure that my level sequence is valid before trying to modify it. So if my level sequence is equal to null, I'm just going to return, and same thing, if my movie scene inside the level sequence is equal to null, that should not really happen, but in case it happens, I'm just going to return right here because we're also going to need the movie scene. So here I'm just going to make sure that it's also valid. So it's done good. So we have a valid actor. We have a valid level sequence. Now it's time to start replacing the current actor in the level sequence by the new one. And actually it's not as easy as it sounds. We don't have one specific function to call that does everything for you. You have to do a few manual steps here and there. It's actually three steps. The first step to replace an actor in the level sequence is to create a new possessable for the new actor you want to use. So in our case, we have an actor right here, we have to convert it kind of into a possessable. And that's what I'm going to do right here. The possessable is actually just a little structure right here, the F movie scene possessable. And in that structure, it contains a few information about the actor you want to use and place inside the level sequence. And to create that structure, you need two information. The first one is simply the name of the track you want to add in the level sequence. In my case, I'm using the actor label, so the name of the actor in the world, but you can obviously name it anything you want. That's the name of the track. So even if your actor is named something like warrior in your level, you can name it chicken in the level sequence. That will also work. In my case, I'm going to make them match because otherwise it's a little bit confusing. So getting the actor label for the name of my track. Here we go. I have the name of my track. And then we also have to provide the class we want to use for that track. And for that one, it's pretty straightforward. We have to use the class of the actor we want to put in the level sequence. Obviously, if it's a static mesh actor, it's going to be a static mesh actor track. Or if it's a skeletal mesh actor, you want to also use a skeletal mesh actor class. So by using the class of the actor you want to inject in the level sequence, that's going to automatically give you the right track in the level sequence. Good. So now we have a little possessable that contains a bit more information about the actor that is in the world. 
We have the processable, now we can simply use it to replace the current processable in the level sequence. That's the second step. So here in my level sequence, I have access to the movie scene. In the movie scene, there's a little function called the replace processable. That's simply going to replace the current processable using the GUID we receive as input. So it's going to look through all the track in the level sequence using that GUID and find the proper track and then replace the content of that track using the processable that we have right here. At the same time, the function is also going to add a bit more information inside the processable structure in case you want to continue working with that possible and you want to continue using your little variable right here. So the function is also going to add a bit more information in there. And that's pretty good because we actually need a bit more information once the possible is added inside the level sequence. So we're going to do that in the third step. So first step is to create the possible. Second step is to add it in the track in the level sequence. But uh, the track in the level sequence doesn't actually know which actor we want to use. It knows the name of the actor. It knows the class of the actor, but it doesn't know the actor itself. And that's what we're going to do in the third step. We're going to assign the actor itself to the track because actually right now the actor is not assigned. It's just a track containing the name of the actor and the class. It doesn't contain the actor itself. So here by calling the function bind possible object inside the level sequence, we're going to be able to attach the actor in the world to that track in the level sequence. And to do that, we're going to need the GUID of that track. And the GUID of that track is set by the replace possible while it was replacing the information of those tracks. So here I have the new GUID of my track. I can get it from my structure. And then I also need the actor I want to assign to that track. So the desired actor I received as input. And then I also need the world containing that actor. I don't know why the function doesn't automatically get it from the actor because that's what we're going to do right here and it makes sense in, I guess, 99% of the cases. So they probably did that for the 1% that's left. But in our case, the actor is inside the world. We're going to use that world. Obviously, we don't want to use any other world. Otherwise, it's just not going to work, actually. So you have to provide the world that contains the actor. Perfect. So create a new possible, assigning it to the track, and finally link the actor in the level to that track. And that's it. Now we can say that it was a success, and it's time to jump in Unreal to see if it works. And here I am in Unreal, and as usual, I have a super simple level. I just have two warriors in there. I have warrior one and warrior two. I also have a level sequence that I have open right here, and it's super simple. I just have my warrior one going from back and forth. I just added a simple sliding animation for my warrior so we can see it moving in the level sequence. And what we're going to do is swap the actor that is currently moving in the level sequence. So if the warrior one is moving, we're going to replace it by the warrior two and vice versa. And we're going to do that using a user interface as usual right here. The user interface itself is super simple. It's just going to be the path of the level sequence we want to modify and a button to call the function we created today. So replace possible. When we click on the button, it's going to go in the graph and it's going to call our little function right here. But before that, there's a bit more logic. First, my two warriors are hard coded in the code right now because I want to easily be able to decide which warrior I want to choose, either warrior one or warrior two. So I hard coded them both right here. And I also have a little boolean that lets me decide which warrior I want to use. Every time I click on the button, it's going to swap the value of the boolean. So it's either going to be zero, one, zero, one, zero, one every time I click on the button and based on that value we're going to pick which warrior we want to use right here so either warrior one or warrior two depending what's the value of my boolean so that's how I'm deciding which warrior I want to use for my function when I click on the button I set my boolean and then I'm getting all the GUID from the level sequence that's a function we created in the previous video so here I'm retrieving all the GUIDs in the level sequence in my case I just have one I have my warrior one at the moment in the level sequence so I'm going to use the first element in my array which is going to be the only GUID in the level sequence. And then I'll provide that GUID to the replace possible actor in level sequence function we created. We have the GUID of the actor we want to replace. We have the new actor we want to use to replace that actor. And finally, we have the level sequence path. And obviously, for both functions, I'm using the same level sequence because we are retrieving the GUIDs from a level sequence and then we're going to replace the GUID from that same level sequence, obviously. Good. Let's go see if it works. I'm going to open my editor utility widget right here. And just so we can see a result, I'm just going to play my level sequence just like that. So now we can see that the wire one is moving. And that's the wire that is inside the level sequence right here, wire one, it has the keyframe and it's moving back and forth. Perfect. If I replace my possessable, now, hey, the wire two is moving instead. I also replace the name of the wire in the level sequence to match the actor that is inside the level and the wire is sliding back and forth. Because my code is alternating between wire one and wire two, I'm swapping the wire moving in the level sequence every time I click on that button and we can see that it works pretty well. Here we go. So that's how you replace a possessable that is currently in the level sequence without losing any tracks or information. 
question. Like, perfect. So that's going to be it for today's video. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.